What's in the box, Lance? Good news, viewers. Vivor sent me one of those diesel heaters, and I'm going to try and put it in my shed and do some weird setup here. Long term, this is good for me because I got some plans on another property. So uh, we'll pull this out of the box. We may tear this unit down a bit and then see if we can uh, make it work afterwards. And let's go from there. Let's see what we got. Pocket screwdrivers, best little knife. Can't go wrong with these. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna edit this out. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna get some side cutters here. I'll just pull it out sideways. A box of goodies. There's some instructions in here. Maybe I should read those and then actually do a proper video for once. Hey, if you notice something, finally got a haircut. Everybody complaining about my hair. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. I get it. I've, I never really cared about my hair because it's curly and uh, it's uncontrollable. You should, have, you should have seen how popular I was when LMFAO came out. I was rocking the biggest afro in the bars, you wouldn't believe. All right, what's going on here? Let's hit pause here. All right, so what are we looking at? Let's go over it, you're gonna learn with me. This is an 8 kV diesel heater. For those who don't know, a lot of semi trucks have diesel heaters. They were, years ago when I was in the industry, very, very expensive. They pulled fuel from the tank, they ran on diesel, they were compact units for the cabs. Very, very expensive. Now. These diesel heaters have been popping up everywhere and they're pretty damn cheap and they're useful. They're very useful if you have diesel on hand. Um, this particular one runs on 12 volts. So you can think, uh, put it in the back of your cab on a car. You have to obviously route the exhaust out. Um, camping, sheds, a lot of people are using these in garages. Um, it gives you all the specs right here. And we're gonna try this out. I'm gonna put it in my shed today. But just going over it right now, look at this. So if I'm in the house, or if you're too lazy to go outside and start it, you can turn it on off and you can adjust the heat. Um, I'm gonna say it has to be line of sight right here. We'll try that. Um, you could come out and do it manually. It's got a little screen right here. This is for your carbon monoxide detector, which is in the bag. That's cool. Great feature to have. And it comes with all this exhaust stuff, a little muffler. Trust me, you need those. Uh, vent here tube, so. You can run this if you want. You can leave it outside and run it the heat directly inside. We'll try it outside, we'll try it inside. I really want to test the carbon monoxide detector. So we'll close the door on my shed. And then, yeah, just little things. This is so thin. And then I guess there's some stuff in here for mounting it. So this is very, very neat. Uh, first, let's pull this cover off and see what we're looking at. So in the instructions, I did flip a few pages ahead here. Where is it? So they do give you a bit of a breakdown of what's going on in here. This is very nice. It would be cool. Let's see. Aha! Parts. Parts list. Not what I was thinking, but if they could give you a parts breakdown to see if this is serviceable. Sorry for the crappy camera angles. There's a lot in here, but I'm not seeing a parts breakdown. Maybe we'll find something on the, the sheet there. But yeah, instructions. Um, Let's pull it apart. All right. So case I just undid like 20 of these Phillips screws pull the cap up off Let's see what we find let's put this off to the side what is going on here let's get you in for a better view all right so here's the guts of it nothing too exciting uh, you're gonna have your fuel coming in through here you're gonna have your clean air your exhaust all the magic's happening in here I don't think I could tear it down too much further than this. We'll take a look on the other side. It must have some type of fan there. Your fuel, your fuel pump, automotive style connector. Oh, I guess this will be good if you guys ever somehow blow a fuse. The fuse is in here. So the principle of diesel heaters is pretty simple. It's a heater element and it's, it's just a slow flow. Let's see if I can pop this off. It looks like it is a little bit serviceable. I'll need two hands here. All right, so the end here threads off and then this is pretty simple. This is a diesel heater. You're gonna have your ignition source in here, motor. Um, I guess it's some type of fan speed controller. I don't know what NTC is, but you know, whatever. Here's the fan. Pretty simple. Uh, well, the motor would control the fan. It's not a separate unit here, obviously, but there's really nothing going on here too complicated. 
uh, GP, power ground. Yeah, and then it's probably some type of speed controller, I imagine. But yeah, again, diesel heaters, heaters, uh, diesel heaters are very simple. The units on the haul trucks, or sorry, I should say the semi trucks were pretty damn expensive when I was dealing with them 15 years ago. So it's nice to see that this is available to people now. And people have been making homemade diesel heaters in their garages for years. It's not a complicated thing. So yeah, let's, uh, let's put this back together and start going through some functions. All right, back together only took me a few minutes. Again, it's Phillips, not hard. So here you have your fuel level. Again, they put a percentage here, whatever. So five liters is the max. So it does say 12 to 24 volts. It makes sense. You can use this in heavy equipment. On the cables here, it says 12 volts, positive power supply and 15 amps. I imagine 15 amps is the max. Here the starting current is saying 10 to 12. So this is probably rated for 15 amps, pretty simple. Um, I'm gonna have to find a battery. I do have a battery, I'm testing it for another video. So we'll hook it up to this. We'll just power it on really quick and see what's going on. Again, I'm doing a review on another thing. This is just a match made in heaven. This makes sense for camping. So uh, we'll hook up the power to this. We'll see what powers up. We'll see if I have to put a battery in here, or if it comes with it, and we'll go from there. So yeah, it's uh, snowing right now here in Canada. I had this battery outside. I'm putting it to the test. Uh, it's got a BMS system, so turn it on right here. I gotta hold it now. There, it's, it'll heat up on the inside. That's pretty cool. So uh, yeah, let's hook this up. All right, so I got it hooked up and obviously a little spark there. Normal, normal stuff. So the screen's on now. Uh, let's figure this out. Showing battery. Oh, that's 13 volts. That's good. Does it do anything else? What's this do? Okay. Showing Wi-Fi connectivity. 20 Celsius, P, Q. We'll have to go through the specs here and see what this is. Obviously, this is your power button. There's nothing in there. Okay, let's go, let's go learn. So I pulled the remote apart. Yes, there is a little uh, battery in here. So let's uh, try this remotely. So when you hit the on button, there's a little light right here. So we'll hold it. And it's already blowing. Obviously there's no, no diesel fuel in here. And I imagine if there was, it would take a little bit of time. So let's just shut this off. Cool. Okay, so we know the remote works and didn't see anything on the screen. I just imagine it just automatically does it without telling you because there's nothing here. Let's see if it'll uh, change from here. No, okay, well, let's keep going. Ah, silly me, I should check everything when I really do these videos. So it does have its own power supply you can plug in. My plan is to run an inverter off this. So this works too, or I could just directly wire it to the battery and it's all good, the solar panels will charge that with my plan. But yeah, here you go. Uh, 100 to 120 volts, 50 to 60 hertz. Uh, North American plug for us, and then it's got its plug here. So pretty simple. Uh, this is probably more for people in a garage now. Like you can hook this up, run the exhaust out, and you're good to go. So let's really get this fired up and see what we're working. I guess I'll mention this while I'm here. This is your carbon monoxide detector, and you plug it in right here. It comes with an extension cable right here. I was just like dumbfounded for a second. Then I realized you unscrew this and you relocate it away from the unit. I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, just if you guys are confused and you're looking for a second one of these, this is your main one. You have to unbolt this, unscrew it with a Phillips and relocate it where you want it. So yeah, I thought I'd mention that really quick. So full disclosure, the gear clamps are uh, kind of shit. That's all right. Go out and buy yourself a better set of gear clamps for these. And this angle right here, no. So Anywhere you're using fuel or generating heat, condensate is a byproduct of, you know, exhaust. So you're gonna want this pointed down and lower than the unit. So I'd have this, I'd straighten it out, but I'd put it lower than the unit and that'd allow it to drain and not fill up with ice after using it. Cause that may cause a hard start or you may be troubleshooting it or think it's broken. So yeah, just some friendly advice, get some different gear clamps. Also looking at the muffler, I'm not seeing an inlet or outlet direction on it. so. It must be omnidirectional. Uh, it's kind of weird that it's not, but a muffling device is a muffling device. I know I'm saying that weird, but as long as it works, it works. Uh, so don't overthink this one. There's not enough clues here to even make a decision. So put it whatever way you feel like. Also, when you go to put this muffler on, wear some gloves. This is sharp. I, I touched it and I knew right away. This is kind of a pain in the butt to get on. It is like thousandths of an inch tight. 
you may have to unkink this a little bit and just work it in there. Take your time. Don't hurt yourself. This is damn sharp. Put some gloves on. Um, they don't give you much uh, margin error on this side. This side's a lot more friendly to put in. This side was not. All right, let's get back to it. All right, I got some diesel in it and it's in my shed. Uh, I'll hold this on button. See what it does. Turn it around. It's just over there. So uh, let's go take a walk and see what it did. So it is running. I can feel airflow here. Uh, we'll see how long this takes to boot up kind of thing. Battery's doing good. Again, I'm doing a separate video on that. And uh, I wonder if it'll show me. H3, I don't know what that is. I got fan, got some stuff going on here. Heat? Okay, we'll go max heat. I guess that's high six. Yeah, we'll see what this does. So, see how well this uh, turns out for you. So it's been running for about four minutes. You can see the temperatures here. It is heating up. It's still not quite there. You can see the battery, the internal management there. It just picked up some speed now. You can see the LC LCD screen. And that's gonna get a little warm, but I can smell the diesel, that's for sure. That's, uh, what's it showing there? 14.2 Celsius. But yeah, she's ramping up now, so we'll come back in five minutes and see what this looks like. All right, here we are five minutes later, and I can tell you right now, the heat coming off this is pretty good. So let's go to the exhaust first. Uh, so, getting about 111 Celsius there, that's pretty good. See the heat's transferring over there. And we go to the tube, about, it's hard to show on the video here, but we're getting about 72 Celsius coming out. I don't know if it'll show the air here. Yeah, about 73, 71, that's pretty good. Hope you guys like this. You see here, battery's uh, done heating up. But yeah, this thing's, it's comfortable in here. It took the chill out. It's about minus three right now, so that's pretty neat. And again, I hope the sound is, uh, coming through good again I got a lot of flow here as you can see there's like openings here uh, over there this is just a, a junk shed at this point and the door is open so let's see if we can make this fault so I was waiting for it to trip I had to close the doors here and it took a little bit but there's so much airflow in here but it shut down I checked it I can still hear it ramping down there's still a bit of flow here that's good it's got a shutdown procedure that's great, the little thingy works. Um, cool, so I thought I'd point out here, it's only been running half an hour and that got pretty damn close to the wood and this exhaust could potentially start a fire. So you gotta be careful, uh, whether you're using it in your garage or at home or in the wilderness, no, it's kicking back up. Must be uh, some type of cool down procedure once it's tripped. Obviously there's no diesel, uh, oh, it's still flowing a little bit. It must be using that as an exhaust. Okay, I'm not sure, quite sure why it's doing that but hmm it's not on 19 minutes is that a how long it's been running 20 am I turning it on that was always the tried and true way Anyways, it's probably some procedures or programming there. I'll have to check the manual. But uh, yeah, let's get back to the garage. Seems like an all right unit. Uh, it's a really rough review. It's just what I do. It's It'll get the job done for camping. Again, I'm saying keep that exhaust properly routed away from flammable stuff, especially if you're in the summertime. Um, good news is it does have Wi-Fi or sorry, Bluetooth connections. So you can see a bunch of data here and set it up the way you want. It also has kind of a built-in DTC trouble code shooting or troubleshooting. So if you make a code there, emergency response, it'll give you codes on the screen and on the pages here, where is it? Like a uh, example, it'll give you like E08 secondary ignition failure. It'll tell you how to troubleshoot it, check the temperatures, all that stuff. Easy. It even has uh, another thing you can scan for the QR code to do troubleshooting, that's good. There's enough information in here. It all depends on your application and how safe you want to be. It's one of those things where, great, when it works, it works, and when it doesn't work, it's not that hard to troubleshoot. So, here's what I think. For the price, 
You can't go wrong. It'll get you through what you need to do. There's a lot of guys on YouTube heating a shop this big with one of those. They go through a few liters of diesel a day, a 20, 20 liter jerry can or five gallon if you're in the US will last you probably a week and a half. It's, it's decent, it does what it needs to do. You just gotta take your time, do the setup. Um, it's got troubleshooting. I, I can't remember the prices on the semi units, but I think they were like five to 10 grand. So when you see something like this hit the market, it's kind of special because it gives DIYers a little more option. It gives people living off the grid a little more option. Um, I think packs a lot of heat. It was heating that little uh, 10 by 10 shed fairly well, considering I probably had like three feet of opening and the door open. So like, and I plan on using that next year when I build the new shed, because they changed the bylaws around here. I can go 10 by 16. So I could put a pretty nice shop in there and use it in the, the winter for little projects outside. So yeah, post in the comments what you think. Uh, this is the Viver, uh diesel heater. It's the, oh my goodness, I had it on here. It's the big one. I think it was listed as eight kilovolts of heat or KV or whatever you want to say. And uh, yeah, post in the comments what you think. And if you want to see me using some other applications, uh, Lance Mechanics, have a good one.